A battle is brewing between law enforcement officials and opponents of a procedure known as asset forfeiture. Critics say the process is being abused, violating suspects' rights against unreasonable search and seizure. Supporters contend asset forfeiture is legal and necessary to fund the war on drugs. I spoke with reporter Clifton Adcock, who's been following this story for Oklahoma Watch. Cliff, what is asset forfeiture and how does that work? Asset forfeiture is the seizure and forfeiture of assets that are acquired by law enforcement agents. Uh, oftentimes it's in connection with the drug trade. Uh, they will seize large sums of cash or drugs that are uh, interdicted along state highways. Uh, once the cash is seized, the, either the district attorney uh, or the, uh, the U.S. attorney will initiate forfeiture proceedings in either state or federal court. Uh, once the property or the cash is forfeited, then it's turned over to the DA's office or the U.S. Attorney's office, as well as shared with local law enforcement agencies such as the county sheriffs or police department. And what do people have to do to get their assets back? In order to get it back, you must, you must file a, uh, an ownership interest in federal or state court. Uh, then you got, have to go through the court process to prove that the, the assets, the cash or whatever was seized, was not involved in the drug trade or uh, any uh, illicit uh, behavior. And there's been controversy on this over whether it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. That's true. There's been uh, some pushback both at the federal level and the state level in an attempt to uh, uh, sort of rein in asset forfeiture. The, uh, the contention of those supporting reforms say that it's, it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment in that they're searching and seizing uh, assets, people's property, without a warrant. State Senator Kyle Loveless has a bill that might settle the dispute. Tell us about that. Uh, Senator Loveless's bill would uh, do several things. It would uh, require that funds that are seized and forfeited go to the state's general fund, uh, therefore putting it under the control of the legislature. Uh, obviously, law enforcement uh, has a problem with that. They would uh, rather the money go back to law enforcement. Uh, so as they say, it would uh, go back toward uh, drug interdiction. Uh, Loveless's bill would also require a higher burden of proof uh, in, in forfeiture proceedings. Uh, and it would also require a criminal conviction uh, before forfeiture proceedings take place, among other things. You're just getting started on this story. Where do you see it heading? Uh, right now, I uh, see it heading, uh, seeing how much uh, the, each of the DA's offices uh, might get from, from these uh, forfeiture proceedings, how much the, I guess, the forfeiture uh, actions result in cash coming into the local law enforcement agencies. Obviously, it's very important to them, both as a way to stop drugs and as a funding mechanism. Clifton Adcock from Oklahoma Watch, thank you. Thank you.